How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this animation right here. It's really cool. It's relatively simple. We're gonna be rendering it in cycles. So if you're a big fan of cycles renders, you're gonna love this one. I really quickly, I wanna let you guys know there is now a free version of real-time materials with 40 free procedural materials in the add-on. I just added it to the Blender Market page, so you can go ahead and click on the free demo variant. You can download that totally for free, 40 really cool, really high quality materials. So you can have some fun with the materials pack, test it out, see how you like it. Uh, so if you want to get that, hit the link in the description. Now let's get into the tutorial. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead, hit Shift A, and we're going to go here and get some text. And then I'm just going to type in Blender text in all caps. All right, so we're going to go over here, this little icon, which is going to allow you to edit your text. And I'm going to center everything out here. On my font, I'm gonna pick a really bold, very thick font. You don't want to, you don't want something thin. You want uh, you want fonts that say black on them. That's gonna be your super bold, very very bold font. Like if I type in, and I have all of these fonts available to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one, Monster Montserrat Black. Very common font you see a lot. So now that we have that, we're gonna go here to the geometry section and we're going to extrude it to however you want. I'd keep it relatively square. And then I'm gonna hit the depth just once so we get a good bevel on this. So now that we have this, shift A, go to curves and get a circle. So let's take this text here and let's go ahead and get a modifier here. And we're gonna get the curve modifier, select that curve and wow, there we go, we have it now. On here. Now we need to go ahead and rotate this text to get it to read properly. So let's go ahead and get the rotation here at 90 degrees. And right here, I believe it's going to be negative 180. There we go. So now it reads blender text. And the truth is, this is probably going to be very unreadable, uh, but that's not really the point. It's just very cool text. Um, a lot of times, text is more of a graphical or a, a artistic piece rather than something that's actually legible. All right, now we have these insane artifacts and we can shade smooth and then we can go ahead and try to shade smooth, but it's really not gonna fix it. So the best thing to do, and it's not gonna be perfect, this is motion graphics, typically you have to do some weird stuff. Uh, first, I wanna fix this right here. See how those guys are touching? We're, that's gonna run into an issue there. So back to the text, you can go to character spacing and there we go. And then I can hit S and scale these back. There we go. And we can actually just get these to look like it's one word, really. All right, so now that we have this, let's go ahead back to the modifiers. We need to add a remesh modifier in order to fix this craziness. So let's go here to remesh right there and plop it above the curve. Let's go here to sharp. We don't want voxel and click remove disconnected. And I'm gonna bring my octree depth to 10. Now it really just depends on what your computer can handle. And then I'm gonna click on smooth shading. And there we go, that is the text. Now you can see this weirdness, but once we start adding effects, lighting and rendering, this is gonna be more and more um, not noticeable, but not having it, you have this. So this is much better than this. Um, now on octree depth, maybe your computer just crashed because that was too much. The octree depth is a subdivision in a sense. So if I go to octree depth of five or six, here, click, get it clicked here, six, seven. So for me, my computer can handle a 10. A 10 looks really good. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Real quick, I'm editing this tutorial and I realized I forgot to mention Bad Normal's uh, render competition. So very quickly, he's gonna give you a default file and you'll be able to build off of the default cube and an environment around it. It's a really cool community project with some very, very cool prizes. So if you want to know more about that, click the video in the descriptions we called Bad Normal's uh, Community Competition. Uh, but it's it's very cool. I'm really happy to be judging it. I'll be the judge on this, so I'll be seeing all you guys' submissions. Um, with that being said, let's get back to the tutorial. All right, now let's go ahead and get the object that's gonna really distort this text and make it look special. So first, I'm gonna bring my octree depth back to maybe six um, so that we can go ahead and our computer will run smoothly when we add the torus, which is what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to the mesh, and add a torus. Um, so once that imports, mine's a little wonky because I touched it, uh, but stay in this menu. You're gonna see the add torus menu. So bring your radius, oh my goodness, there we go. Bring your radius to fill up that text. So see how it's in the middle there? And if you wanna have more uh, view, you can go over here to the wireframe view and you can see that. For me, 
I've done this a few times, so I kind of know where to place it. Um, now we have that. Now we need to get the major radius in order to make it wide enough. So just like that. So it fills it up. We have a little bit poking off on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and bring that minor radius up more. And now we're done. We do need to go ahead and subdivide this guy. So I'm gonna hit tab, right click, subdivide, bring your smoothness up to one, and then just sub this, subdivide and shade smooth. Okay, so let's click on the text here, go to the modifiers, bring my octree depth back to 10 so that we can look at this in the wireframe. So you can see the text is completely engulfed or completely inside of the torus. That is what we want. All right, so now you go ahead and save your file. I'll call it tut, 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 tut. And let's go ahead and start the lighting and texturing process. So click on your camera icon right here on your, usually I tell you to put everything at one, but since we're dealing with glass, I'm just gonna be lazy. I'm gonna click and drag. I'm gonna make everything five. Really that you can get more specific with this, but since we're only rendering one object, it's gonna be fine. Um, but really it's gonna be your transmission steps. I mean, your transmission bounces that need to be up, uh, but I'm gonna put everything at a nice five because that's what works for me. Here in my render settings, um, it's probably gonna get noisy. So I'm gonna go up to 500 to see what happens on the render and we'll test that out later. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this looks in cycles. So I'm gonna click on the viewport shading button here to see the cycles preview. And then if you hit this drop down, turn on, turn off scene world, scene lights, you'll get some, uh, some HDRIs that, that they don't come out in the final export. So I'm gonna click on this Taurus here, go here, to the material section, click new, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get a transmission up and my roughness all the way down. Then I'm gonna click on the text inside. I'm gonna click new. We're gonna make it metallic, bring it all the way white. And now we have our text within our torus, which is really cool. And then here's the fun part. See how it looks right now? See the text? What we'll do is click on that torus, go down here to IOR, your index of refraction. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna move it so notice how what happens there. You can actually bow your text out even more to get this very interesting, like it's about to burst out kind of look. And you can really make that as extreme as you want. But look how cool that is. And so now you have this incredible look with the glass. And I'm gonna bring my roughness up just slightly for the lights to interact with it and they're not gonna be so sharp. All right, so now we have this, we can start lighting. So I'm gonna hit this drop down and click scene world, scene lights. All right, so first off, I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the front. I'm gonna hit shift A and get a camera. And then I'm gonna hit control alt zero. That'll snap it to view. And then I'm gonna hit G, middle click and move it out a little bit. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these two things. And then I'm gonna hit R twice and rotate it. Now it's gonna be jumpy. So if it's too jumpy for you, go ahead, go back to that modifier, bring your octree depth down to like five <clears throat> so that it can actually rotate and select the circle, camera, and the torus. Oops, sorry, the circle, the text, and the circle. Or just go over here and highlight everything. I made it hard for myself. So now I'm just gonna hit R twice and get this thing to rotate. And I'm gonna rotate it like this. And then maybe we bring my camera back by hitting G and middle click. Um, but there we go. We want it to be kind of rotated just enough so the light catches it and we see both sides, which is what's gonna look really cool. Let's go ahead and get our lighting going. So I'm gonna go back to the cycles view. I'm gonna get my octree depth back to 10. And then I'm gonna go ahead, shift A, light, and we'll get a spotlight. I'm gonna hit S and scale it down. And then I am gonna go ahead and bring them all the way up here. I'm hitting G and then I'm hitting R twice to rotate it. Just like that. Let's get this light. <clears throat> so click on the uh, click on the light, go to the light settings and give it 2000. So that's not enough. So let's go maybe 10,000. Boom, all right, so now we got some nice lighting and let's make it slightly blue. And then let's go ahead and get one more light. I'm gonna take this light here, I'm gonna hit Shift D, move it over, hit G, and then hit R twice to kind of move it here. Let me zoom in a little bit. So now it's pointing that direction. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make that light a very vibrant red. All right, click on this little world icon here and bring your color down to black. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and get that other spotlight and make it much brighter. Let's do 20,000. 
things need to be really bright. Then here on the glass of the Taurus, let's make sure it's pure white. So bring it up some more. There we go. That'll let more light in. And then back on the spotlights. Looks like the red is fine. In fact, we can bring it over there. Maybe slightly more to an orange, actually. Very fiery red orange. Perfect. And then we'll go back to the spotlight. I think everything is bright enough. Let me just render it once and see how it looks. So I just gave this a very quick dirty render at uh, 50%. So it looks like it is looking really, really nice. Now I made a mistake. We need to animate this and I already rotated everything. So we won't be able to animate it. We need to get everything back to a rotation of, uh, back to where they were originally just flat. So I'm gonna click on that Taurus, go here. I'm gonna click and drag, zero that out. And I'm gonna eight hide him. This is gonna be a little more tricky. I'm gonna click on this wire here and then I'm gonna click and drag rotation of zero, and then click this guy. The Y I think it needs to be zero. This is gonna be negative 180 and 90. All right, we're back to square one. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy to rotate and animate. So this is gonna be a little bit more difficult. What we want to do is have it rotate this way, but also be on an angle like that. And it won't be, you can't do that as simply as you think you can. So what we're going to do is first get one empty, right here, plain axis, and we're gonna call this rotate one. So that'll be the first rotation. This will handle the rotation this way. We're gonna get another animation to be able to actually rotate it the other way to give it some style. So with that being said, I'm gonna to go to the wireframe view just to make sure I'm highlighting everything. So highlight these three objects. Then we're gonna hold down Shift, click this object, Control P for parent, select that object. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure this, I'll bring the octree down to six, and then click on this object. Looks like everything is parented to it, which is perfect. Let's go ahead and animate that. So I think 250 frames is probably good enough. That's gonna be your default. So we'll go hit the back arrow to go to frame zero. So this is going to be a loop. Go to your preferences, and then in the animation section, make sure your default interpolation is on linear. And then we're gonna animate it on this axis here. So right here in the Z keyframe, go to the very end and type in 360. That's gonna give you a 360 degree rotation, which is a full rotation. So now it is doing that. Now, here's what the problem is. All right, let's go ahead and take this, and I want this to be on the other axis. I wanna rotate right here, watch this. Now it is going to do that. We don't want that. We want it to stay on that axis. So the, what, the way to do that is you hit Shift A, you get another plane axis just like that, and then make sure you call this Rotate 2. So we're gonna click on Rotate 2, hold down Shift, click Rotate 1, Control, control P, click that object. So now, what, watch what happens here. We're gonna to go to the wireframe view so we can see it. Now, when we rotate it, and then we hit R twice and rotate again, look at this. Now, it will rotate on that correct axis just with a little bit of wobble. So now it's gonna be rotating on the correct axis and uh, it's gonna look awesome. So if we go back here, we have a seamless loop. If we go to our camera, you can see it stays. How cool is that? It's a little bit tr more tricky but it is gonna give you what you want. So let's go to the cycles view. Let's bring those two spotlights back in. And then it looks like my spotlight accidentally got rotated out, which happened to me when I was planning this tutorial. All right, so now we have this. We can get that text to be back um, fully. So if you can't see anything in your outline, hit the drop down here, hit the drop down here. Everything's parented, so you're gonna have these stacks. So we'll go to the text, go back to the modifier, type in 10. Um, and we're pretty much done. Now you can just really rotate your lights, make this look how you want it to look. Um, and then here on your render settings, we're gonna go here to a nice 100% on the 1080p, if you wanna keep it 1080p. Um, click on this card, turn on denoising data, and then let's go ahead and give it one render. Looks like we're at 500 samples that may need to be higher, just because this is gonna be pretty noisy. But let's go ahead and keep it at 500 for now and let's go and render it once and see how it looks. All right, so now that we have that render, it took nine seconds for me. Let's put those five uh, bounces. So let's go here to the compositing, use nodes, I'm gonna hit Shift A and get a viewer. 
Shift A search viewer, plug that into there. I'm gonna hold down Shift and right click so that all of our nodes go into the animation. Let's get a denoise. And then we'll plug the noisy normal here, noisy albedo here. Now that's not gonna take an effect with the albedo and the normal unless we do another render. So let's render it one more time. All right, so this is what we're working with. If you're happy with that level of denoising, just keep it at 500 samples. If you want it to be better, you can either render it out at 4K at a lower sample count or raise your sample count. Uh, then for me, I'm gonna go ahead and get a glare node because we do have these really bright lights that we can go ahead and take advantage of like that. We'll go here to fog glow. So now they're nice and bright, which is really cool. We'll get a lens distortion node. These are some of my favorite nodes to work in and bring your dispersion up to 0 0.1. And that's really gonna mess with the edges. Now you have this chromatic aberration here in the edges. Um, but with that being said, that is the tutorial. What you'll now do for your export, you know, keep it as these settings if you want. You can make it 4K, you can make a different size, whatever. Keep it at a PNG sequence because this will be a cycles render. Go ahead and create a folder and save these PNG, the PNGs in that folder. Render, render animation, and when you're done, you'll have a really cool animation like this one. So there you guys go. Thank you for watching that. Again, if you want to get real-time materials for free, 40 free materials, you can get that in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.